Hello and welcome. In this video, I will show you how to implement Kubernetes Gateway API using Envoy Gateway Fabric. I will be creating a new EKS cluster using Terraform, and then I will go on to install the Envoy Gateway. Everything I discuss here is available in my GitHub repo, and I will share the link in the gist. And I already have a load balancer controller installed. You can always follow the instruction for installing the Envoy Gateway. So if you check out my GitHub repo, AWS EKS Terraform, and move on to EKS Envoy Gateway, you will find all the Terraform code required to spin up a new EKS cluster. I'm using the EKS modules at the moment for creating a cluster and using cluster version of 1.30. I'm creating a single node cluster with API and config map authentication and a single instance of M6A large with it using a spot instance. I'm also installing one add-on that is the VPC CNI. This is kind of required for AWS load balancer controller. And I'm also installed in creating a IAM role for the AWS load balancer controller and installing the load balancer controller. So why do we need a load balancer controller when you are configuring the ingress? If you don't have the load balancer controller, what will happen is when you deploy the gate, ingress gateway, it will spin up a classic load balancer. With the load balancer controller, you will be able to use network load balancer. So that is the reason why we have it. So to get started, we need a EKS cluster. I'm already in my Envoy Gateway folder, and I have all the Terraform code in this folder. I've already run the Terraform apply, and my EKS cluster is ready. So we have our EKS cluster installed and ready, and we already connected to the EKS cluster, and we can see the load balancer controller is already installed. And if you look for the Kubernetes API for the gateway, if you look at the for this resources, there's nothing because by default, at present anyway, EKS does not come with the CRDs for the gateway API, and we let install it that separately. With the Envoy gateway, it is coming along with the Helm package. We don't have to separately install it. So let's go and look at the installation of the gateway API. So if you look at the gateway API specification, you have three main resources. One is gateway class that defines how the gateway behaves. And number two is gateway that defines a gateway and create the load balancer. And then there is root. So we have a TLS root or HTTP root. So this is how we're going to, going to implement it. So we will have a load balancer, load balancer that will be network load balancer. We will define a gateway class, which is the Kubernetes API. And we will attach Envoy proxy configuration to manage the gateway class itself. So then we will create a gateway based on this gateway class. And this will result in a new network load balancer to be created based on the Envoy proxy configuration. Once we have the gateway, we can, uh, we can configure necessary HTTP route for your separate individual sites. So let's go and start with the installation. So if you go to the inst instructions here, I'm installing, I'm using the Helm chart for installing it. And uh, this Helm chart also includes the CRDs for Gateway API. So we don't have to do any additional installation. And default configuration is pretty good to start with anyway. We allow a single instance and we'll go ahead with the installation. So I'm installing the application into Gateway namespace. And as you can see, the Gateway controller is getting installed and getting ready. At this point, you have the Envoy Gateway fabric. This does not create any gateway class or any gateways. So for that, we need to apply the further configurations. As you can see, there is no gateway classes, nor gateways. So we are completed the installation of gateway fabric. So the next step is to, let's check the CRDs. So if you look for uh, API resources. So let's go ahead and configure the gateway and gateway class. If you move on to my code and go into the gateway folder, you will see a couple of configuration. There is an internal gateway and external gateway. We'll start with the external gateway. So the first configuration we need to do is having an Envoy proxy configuration. This will enable us to customize the load balancer and the proxy behavior. This is a very basic configuration and there is advanced proxy configuration if you like to do further customization. In the Envoy proxy, the main things I'm looking for is the annotations. So these are the annotations. These are for the load balancer controller. So we are saying the target type of IP and load balancer controller by default will spin up an internal load balancer. So in order to force it to create an external one, you need to specify the annotation of internet facing. 
And I'm also enabling the preserve client IPs through so that we can see the source IP. Once Envoy Proxy is configured, we can configure the gateway class and I'm calling it external gateway class because I'm using the external proxy configure, configuration to spin up a external load balancer. So in the gateway class, I provide the name and in this parent reference section, this is where I say which Envoy Proxy configuration to use. So here I'm using external proxy config and the namespace I'm specifying. So that is creating a gateway class. The task after that is creating a gateway. So we are creating a gateway using the gateway class. We're putting a name of external, name, external gateway and we specify the gateway class to use. So when I'm using this gateway class, it is effectively using the settings I created in the Envoy proxy and using this gateway class here. In this example, I'm only configuring a single listener for port 80, and I'm not specifying any particular domain name here. So if you have, in most cases, you will, have, you will want to have a HTTPS listener. So then in that case, you can always use the HTTPS configuration and specify your domain name. In terms of annotation, if you are using Let's Encrypt, you can always use the annot respective annotation for creating the certificate automatically. And uh, if you are using Argo CD and installing it, you may need to skip the dry run installation because sometimes Argo CD can get, get stuck if it's trying to install the gateway before the gateway CRDs are ready. I'm moving on to the gateway folder and I can see there is external gateway.yaml as well as internal gateway.yaml. I'll go ahead and apply the external gateway.yaml. And you will see created a new gateway. It also created a new gateway class and it also assigned a load balancer controller. It may take a few minutes for the gateway load balancer control to be implemented and be ready to use. So if you look in the console and what we can see is we go to the EC2 and load balancers. You can see it's provisioning a new load balancer. And this is of type internet facing and the network load balancer. Still in a provisioning state, we'll come back and check in a few minutes. Let's have a look at the internet gateway. So our network gateway is ready and active state. So let's have also verify that it's able to resolve it. So DNS is resolving. You will also notice that there's a new pod created for this gateway. So whenever we create a new gateway, Envoy Gateway Fabric will create a new Envoy proxy for handling that particular gateway's traffic. So by defining the parameters in the Envoy proxy, you can control how many gateway ports needs to spin up and auto scaling on all other configuration. If you check the advanced, config, advanced Envoy configuration file, you will find all these details. We have our gateway deployed and it is ready to be used. So if you look at the HTTP routes, you don't see a single route because we are not applied any HTTP routes, we are not deployed any application. So if you go into the code and if you go into the sample app folder, there's a YAML file which is having a simple application that is a echo server. There's a deployment, there's a service, and I'm exposing it with the service of cluster IP. And at the end of it, I'm defining a HTTP route. This is what is going to route the traffic using the from use from the gateway. So in the configuration parent reference, I'm saying which gateway to use and which section to use. I'm using everything HTTP and this is the section I created for while creating the gateway. I'm providing a host name and also the backend rule where to route the traffic to. So we'll go ahead and apply the configuration. So I'll we'll just copy the command. So we'll go into the sample app folder and uh, apply the echo server configuration. So let's wait and see. You can see there are two copies of new two ports being spun up and they are becoming ready. And you can see a new HTTP route is available. So there's the domain name. And since we don't have a DNS, we'll have to use curl with a header to test the application. So I'll set the NLB URL variable. So easy for me to use and uh, then do a curl command and see if it works. There you go, it works. So it's hitting the load balancer and the requests are coming from two different ports. That are the two different ports we have. Let's see what you can see in terms of logs. So here you can see the source where the requests are coming and also you can see the source IP addresses. 
So we have an application that is working over the Gateway API. So we have a single port that is serving all the traffic and which is a risk. We obviously need more than one replicas. So how do we configure that? For that, we go into the advanced configuration of Envoy Proxy. In the Envoy Proxy configuration, we can provide additional annotations and configurations for controlling the behavior of the gateway Envoy Proxy configuration or Envoy Proxies. To start with, I'm doing a, keeping a delay for the shutdown manager whenever there is a termination of the pod. Kubernetes will terminate pretty quick, whereas Network load balancer will take a time, takes its own time before it detects the changes. So I'm adding a delay when there's a termination of the pod. I'm also defining some of the resource requests and also there's a horizontal pod auto scaling. At the moment, I'm setting as minimum replicas of three. Also in the annotation section for the load balancer, I'm setting the health check as same as the readiness probe that of the Envoy proxy. So let's go and implement this advanced proxy configuration and see the difference. So I'm already in the gateway folder and if you can see the configuration advanced configuration is here. So I will apply. So we have applied the configuration and we set the minimum number of replicas to be three and spinning up extra ports and we have three replicas now. I hope you find this video useful. Thank you very much.